Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. Every two years, dozens of countries will come together to participate in the world's largest maritime warfare exercise. It's known as RIMPAC, or the Rim of the Pacific Exercise. It gives thousands of Navy crewmen a chance to hone their skills, participate in mock combat drills, and perform live fire exercises. The U.S. military specifically has a long history of using old, decommissioned, or derelict vessels as targets during RIMPAC. Arguably, one of the most extreme examples of this is known as SYNCX, or the SYNC exercise. SYNCX, as the name might imply, involves using real, full-size vessels as target ships for crew training and weapons tests. Essentially, it gives sailors a first-hand look at just what their weapons are capable of and what they can expect from a real-life engagement with an enemy vessel. To get the most out of the exercises, ships typically engage with a range of cannons, missiles, and torpedoes. In the end, it's a win-win for everyone concerned. The sailors get valuable training in the use of their weapons, and the old ships get to serve a purpose one last time. In fact, the sunken vessels will go on to serve as a habitat for sea life and a destination for commercial divers. The decommissioned vessels used in these sinking exercises need to be thoroughly cleaned and cleared before they can be sunk. That means removing materials or technology that might prove valuable or useful to an enemy and removing all environmental contaminants like asbestos and oil. SYNCX training typically involves multiple vessels, aircraft, and even ground crews in some cases. The goal is to give as many personnel as possible a chance to get mock combat experience before the target vessel is actually sunk. Basically, each unit will take turns engaging the derelict vessel using various weapons and techniques. These sorts of attacks tend to cause mostly superficial damage rather than actually causing the vessel to sink. However, when the time comes to deliver that final blow, the attacking ships will turn to heavy-duty weapons like torpedoes or harpoon anti-ship missiles. Firing a harpoon missile from a ship is no easy process. Simply loading the 1,100-pound weapon requires several crew members working in very close quarters. If any single part of the multi-step process is forgotten, it could be potentially catastrophic for the ship or submarine firing the weapon. That said, harpoon missiles are devastating weapons. Boasting a 488-pound warhead that travels just above sea level at speeds of more than 500 miles per hour. In fact, these missiles are so advanced, they cost nearly $1.5 million each. Torpedoes, on the other hand, are far less sophisticated, but no less deadly. These self-propelled weapons travel just under the surface of the water, where they can do maximum damage to the hulls of enemy vessels.
They are loaded via a similar process to the harpoon and discharged via various torpedo tubes on the fronts and sides of the ship. A single torpedo is often enough to completely disable a vessel, provided the proximity detonation occurs in the vulnerable locations on impact. As stated, destroyers and other attack vessels are not the only ships that participate in RIMPAC sink x drills. Aircraft carriers from several nations use these exercises as a way to test their flight crew's overall combat readiness. This means prepping, loading, and launching fighter jets in conditions very similar to what they might experience in a real conflict. These aircraft will also get their chance to engage target ships with a variety of munitions. Back on land, U.S. Marine Corps F-A-18 Hornets are getting the same preparation. After being loaded and fueled, they will fly in several mock engagements both at sea and in the surrounding areas. RIMPAC is held in Hawaii, which presents many unique simulation opportunities due to the plethora of uninhabited islands and other remote areas. By far, one of the most important drills run during RIMPAC is what's known as the Undersea Rescue Exercise. In this case, the U.S. and Chinese Navy divers work together using a submersible vehicle to engage with a mock-up of a sunken ship section. The submersible pilot is tasked with perfectly aligning the hatches. Once connected, they can equalize the pressure and allow any trapped crew members in need of rescue to move into the submersible. Operations like this are considered among the most logistically challenging in the world. So being able to practice in realistic conditions is essential to success later on. Unfortunately, not every mission can take place in the sparkling warm waters of Hawaii. Since 2016, the United States Navy has increasingly worked to expand its mission into the Arctic. This has resulted in a training program dubbed ISEX, like RIMPAC, It features several countries working together to perform various drills and exercises in one of the coldest and most remote areas in the world. Over the course of around five weeks, submarines, vessels, divers, and even Arctic research posts participate in scenarios like ice torpedo recovery. A drill like this requires amazing coordination on behalf of the divers and crew aboard the ship. Indeed, even with thick dry suits and other protective gear, entering water that is just above freezing temperatures is extremely hazardous. Dip your tanks, dip your brakes, dip your brakes. The same can be said of the ships that are required to maneuver through this thick ice, especially submarines. The real challenge, however, comes when the submarine needs to surface. After all, attempting to raise the vessel through thick, heavy ice can do incredible damage to the ship, potentially leaving it disabled, thousands of miles away from assistance. 
So before attempting to surface through the ice, subs will first use satellite imagery to identify any nearby cracks or weak spots. If none are found, the captain will have no choice but to punch through. Unless it's an emergency, sub crews will only attempt this in areas where the ice is less than three feet thick, as this minimizes the chances of damage. Once a spot is found, the crew releases compressed air, forcing the water out of the ballast tanks to push the sail of the submarine up through the ice and into the cold Arctic air. Be it in the tropics of the Pacific or the frozen north, militaries around the world are always preparing their crews for any potential situation. From rescue and recovery to all-out war, these men and women need practice in order to perform their commander's expectations. Events like RIMPAC, SYNC-X, and ISEX are integral to achieving that level of expertise. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.